Oh boy. Oh man. I am so annoyed by these limited time locker codes. I'm sorry. I know there's a lot of people in the community that like them. Uh, mainly the people who were running multiple apps to try <laughs> to get these cards in a quick fashion, but I am not one of those people. I'm sorry. I hate these codes. I really do. So before we go uh, lose my soul or what's left of it by playing limited, let's count down the top 10 cards under 100k in NBA 2K22, my team. There's some decent ones. So let's start off with, uh, you know, a couple brothers here. Lonzo Ball. And obviously, spoiler alert, the next honorable mention is LaMelo Ball, obviously. And I wish it was LiAngelo. Unfortunately, it's not. Lonzo Ball is very good. He's one of the better point guards that you can buy for under 100K in this game. I would actually put Jaden Ivey right here, too. I didn't have enough honorable mention spaces for him, but he's incredibly good as well, so I wanted to highlight Jaden Ivey, too. Uh, Jalen, er, Jalen, Jaden Ivey is going to be more of your three-point hunting point guard. Uh, Lonzo is going to be more of your traditional point guard. He's going to rim run. He can obviously three hunt, but Lonzo's just genuinely good. And then, obviously, his brother would be the next honorable mention as well. It would be LaMelo. And the reason he is an honorable mention is I think he is a top tier point guard in this game, but he's so expensive, dude. Like he's closer to 100K and I'm not certain that it's worth paying that for him at this point, mainly because you can get guys like Lonzo Ball for 30, 40K, um, sometimes even less. Like I saw him go for like 20 yesterday. Um, Jaden Ivey's around that price as well. So, and for this price, you can get a guy who's about the same size as Lon, eh, a little bit taller. I think like an inch or two taller than LaMelo for, you know, around the same price honestly even less though so lamello is good i mean i've i don't need to talk about lamello that much honorable mention number three mobamba mobamba is definitely a budget card at this point i mean you can get him for as low i saw him going for like 11k yesterday which i think the one that i saw going for that was probably a snipe but at the same time like it doesn't really matter i mean we got ones for 14k here you know Mo Bamba is phenomenal. Like the only reason he has left my lineup is because I got Invincible Hakeem, who I just really enjoy using. But Mo Bamba still comes up. I run him at power forward at times too, which is super toxic. Mo Bamba has a nice jump shot, huge player build. He's really skinny. He actually gets pretty good defensive animations. His block animations will actually keep the ball inbound for the most part, which I really like. Not a lot of people do that. So that's pretty cool. Uh, Mo Bamba is heat. You should pick up Mo Bamba especially for like under 20k yeah he's the best center in the game i know a lot of people like mark williams um for that price point as well um so i would say he might be here as well but i think for my money mo bamba is definitely a little bit better and another card i wanted to spotlight at the honorable mention who i just don't see anybody talk about for some reason is banchero like it's weird because I know he's not the best card in this set for sure, but he's really, really good. And I don't know why people are not talking about this card as much as they should. I mean, yes, he's probably a little bit disappointing, but he's six foot 10, 240, Rudy base, one of my favorite releases in the game. Like, absolute heater. He plays defense, he can carry the rock a bit. I'm sure he's not the most meta dribbling, but you know, most people, most people look at these dribble sigs and they like factor them into cards and it's like you don't even use half of these moves anyway which is one of my favorite things that occurs they're like yeah i don't know i don't want that card he doesn't have tray escape okay well do you use tray escape or an escape period when you play no but i'd like to if i wanted the option sure so <laughs> so be it fine on to the top 10 oh yeah you already knew my boy was getting I can't put him too high. I can't, but Ben Wallace deserves to be here. Ben Wallace is like a budget card at this point. He should not be this cheap. Truly, he shouldn't. And he's probably one of the better power forwards that you can get at this price point. Yeah, he's a little bit smaller at six foot nine, but he's jacked, obviously. And honestly, he's so good defensively that it really doesn't matter. Like, he can do it all. He can handle the rock. He has a good jump shot. He plays some of the best defense in the entire game. He can guard all five positions, which is huge, man. Ben Wallace is phenomenal. And if you have a budget team, you need Ben Wallace straight up. Like, you really do. There's no one, at least in my opinion, at the power forward that you can get for the price that Ben Wallace is going for that's as worth it. I don't believe that to be the case. Number nine, a card uh, we've talked about ad nauseum this entire year, DeMar DeRozan. DeRozan's stupid cheap as well. Like, he's like 25K um, and below from what I've seen. 
DeMar DeRozan is just a T-Mac that's better on current gen than he is on next gen. That's all it is. So if you're a big fan of T-Mac, by all means, pick up Benedict or DeMar. <laughs> I spoiled it. Number eight is one of my favorite cards in the game, and it's crazy. I did not expect to like this card as much as I uh, I do. It's, it's kind of crazy. I really did not think he was going to be as good as he is, and I can't find him for some reason. Benedict Mathurin. This dude, I have no idea who this person is, like straight up. I'm sure I'm going to get called a casual for this fact, but I truly had no idea who this person was pre-draft. I don't pay attention to college basketball. It just, I don't know, the last two years it's bored me. I don't know what it is. But this card is ridiculous. He's essentially better offensive, Jarrah Wallace. And like, he can do it all. He reminds me, at least as far as like how I play with the card, he reminds me of R.J. Barrett when R.J. Barrett first came out. Like, that's kind of the level of card that I'm talking about. R.J. Barrett was the best budget card in the game for a little bit. And I would be willing to say that Benedict is up there. At the two guard, I don't know if you can get anyone as effective as him for the price he's going for, which is literally like 9K MT, which is absurd. Number seven, old heads rejoice it is larry johnson larry johnson is still a top tier point guard in this game i know a lot of people have forgotten about him but he is ridiculous i see that tim disagrees with all of these on my list but i feel like he cannot disagree with larry johnson because he is an old head he can't do it larry johnson is fun he's got a huge player build he dunks on everyone he's got one singular gold teeth gold teeth i think he has multiple gold teeth now in his advanced age but at the time one gold tooth just one Larry Johnson is sick. He's super tight. I just really enjoy this card. I have nothing uh, of substance to say about him, though. Number six is Kobe. Specifically, NBA 75 Kobe. Um, honestly, Supernova Kobe's not that much bad anyway. Um, he's really not. He's not that bad. Like, people are saying that he's worse than NBA 75 Kobe. I really don't believe that's completely accurate. I just feel like, you know, there's a little bit less on the Hoff badge front. But other than that, they're really the same card, <laughs> truly. The only cards I would avoid would obviously be All-Star Kobe and, like, the My Team Anniversary Kobe, unless you're trying to, like, lock in for that set. Um, same with Hero Kobe, unless you want Wilt really, really bad. But I can't seem to find any NBA 75 Kobe's, but they're they're lurking in here. They're a little harder to pull. But uh, NBA 75, I don't know, dude. Kobe just this year... He doesn't excite me in any way, shape, or form. Like, I, he's just a very unexciting player this year in 2K. I know I'm going to get slandered for that take in the comments, but I, I truly believe that. I just feel like he's a very average two guard this year. Earlier on, he was really good. Like, when his pink diamond came out, his first NBA 75 card came out, he was really good. Um, his diamond was actually really solid, too. But I think since we got the all star one, I just feel like. He really hasn't been doing it for me, man. Like, I, I don't know, dude. I just don't care. Number five, one of the more expensive cards on this list, Jabari Parker. <laughs> Jabari Smith. Future Rockets legends, a little bit expensive, to be completely honest, but uh, he's good. Six foot ten, though, he looks like six eight. Like, he looks small. I don't, I don't know what it is, but he does. Um, he does a little bit of everything, though. He's got Ray Allen base. Like, he can move, he can shoot, he can defend, he can bang in the post a little bit, like he can dunk. I mean, there's not really much to say. He's just a little bit more expensive than you'd like. Number four, Thon Maker. Oh yeah, Thonathan is really tight. Like, Thon's seven foot tall, he's gangly. He looks terrifying on the court. Shout out to the Bulls for getting McCurr Maker on the team, by the way, I hope I'm saying that right. Oh my God, so sick. We got Thon Maker's brother so tight is he gonna get minutes no he's on the g league affiliate but at the same time i will stand firm that we better get a mccurr maker card in my team shout out to future bulls legend mccurr uh thon maker's good he's just terrible he's not terrible in the defensive end but on the interior he's really bad he will get abused due to his skinny frame and weak interior defensive stats um, but at the same time he's seven foot tall with a massive wingspan so he's gonna get some blocks too Number three, this man is named after a vacuum, but at the same time, he is better than you would expect. Dyson Daniels. Probably the best point guard on current gen outside of like endgame cards, honestly. Um, I would say Cade's up there too, but Dyson Daniels is really good. 
he requires some work. He requires some shooting badges, which a lot of the ones you'll find on the market are going to have those already because a lot of people picked him up last week and then were like, yeah, this is my point guard for the near future and then just dropped him immediately. But he's huge, six foot eight, 195. He's gangly, but he can move really well too. He kind of reminds me of Josh Giddy in a way. Like, he's not that far off of Josh Giddy as far as like how well he operates on the floor and like the kind of player he brings to your team. I always caution uh, comparing players because people inevitably come in here like, no, they're not the same. Well, dude, they are. They're six, eight point guards. Like, they're going to be similar in some capacity. Number two, my starting point guard, Danny Granger, dude. Six foot nine, 228, lights out, jump shot with base 29 on very quick, clamps, everything that you would need. This card comes straight elite out of the box. Like, he has three badges that he doesn't have, none of which are important in any way, shape, or form. Like, yeah, he's got some gold badges you'd like to see on Hoff, but for the most part, all of his Hoff badges are elite. He is truly, in my opinion, the best point guard that you can buy for under 100k, period. I'm sorry. And then, finally, number one, it has to be Shaq. It it does. It has to be Glitch Shaq. Like, let me find Glitch Shaq specifically, because Glitch Shaq is stupid. I know there's people out there, detractors of the word of Shaq, Okay. People are going to say that the NBA 75 Shaq is the best. I personally do not believe that in any way, shape, or form. Fat Boy Phoenix Suns Shaq is the superior Shaq. Seven foot one, but I swear to God, Shaq just looks smaller than seven foot this year. Like, I swear for some reason, this year and last year specifically, maybe in 2K22, I can't really remember, but this year and last year, he's looked 6'11". Like, he doesn't have the dominating physique that a Shaq should have. You know what I mean? He doesn't look like he is a dominating presence on the My Team court. He doesn't. I don't know what it is. But uh, Shaq's ridiculous. He can shoot. He's got a terrible jump shot. Shaq based. It's not good. But once you get the hang of it, it's definitely greenable for sure. And this Shaq can do a little bit of everything. Like, he's basically 90 plus in almost every single stat. So, like, it doesn't really matter. <laughs> His three-point tendency, I can't remember. Yeah, he's got a zero three-point tendency. Like, the CPU is going to sag off him, too, which makes him extremely dangerous. The only thing that makes it a little bit less dangerous is his jump shot. But at the same time, it's a Shaq Diesel that shoots threes and can handle the rocks. So, you know, go get him. I don't know, man. If you have anybody else, just let me know. But that's just the best.